Guys, I'm going to go ahead and just give you a brief rundown of what you're going to be doing in this roller coaster project, kind of talking you through the main ideas, the big things that you're going to be um, kind of working on, um, as well as showing you a little bit of Desmos and kind of what you'll probably want to do um, in creating your graph, which will probably honestly be one of the hardest parts of this project. Um, so as far as the description goes, um, you'll be using your newly acquired knowledge of polynomials to construct a polynomial roller coaster. Um, people who love math that are going to come from all over the world to take a look at and maybe even ride your roller coaster. So are you going to build a thrilling roller coaster for the adrenaline junkies out there or maybe a more pleasant ride that families can enjoy together? Only you know the answer to these questions and the world can't wait to find out. That's what this project is going to be. So to start off with, just some basics of your roller coaster. What are you going to call it? What's the theme going to be? Is it Western space? Who knows? Um, what type is it going to be? So is it going to be high thrill, low thrill? Are you going to make it wooden, steel? What's it going to be made out of? And then what are maybe some ideal parts? Do you want it to be built in Disney World? Do you want it to be built in Six Flags or maybe Worlds of Fun? Where do you see this roller coaster ending up? So to start off with, you're going to have to come up with a graph. And again, this is going to be the hardest part um, is coming up with that graph. I'm suggesting you to use Desmos. If you try to use your own graphing calculator, it's going to be pretty hard to, to get it to work out. Um, so, so definitely would suggest using Desmos. Um, and I'll show you that in just a moment. Um, you're going to want to start by writing your polynomial in factored form. Um, the x-axis is going to represent seconds. Um, so, so think about the time that you want the ride to, re the ride to last for. Um, roller coasters on average last anywhere from 30 seconds to over 120 seconds, which would be two minutes. Um, so keep in mind kind of how long you want your ride to be. Um, don't forget that your factors can also include multiplicities, so feel free to mix some exponents in there and put an expo or a, a solution at x equals zero. Um, the leading coefficient is probably going to need to end up being very small, um, something like 0 0.001 or less, um, in order to kind of um, make your ride a little bit more feasible. Otherwise, you're going to have very high hills that drop very quickly, which maybe you want. Who knows? So here's how I would suggest typing in your function. Um, in Desmos, obviously, you don't need the P of X equals part. You go straight to typing in your parentheses and factors. Um, I left a blank for leading coefficient. Um, once you figure out what that's going to be, and then you'll just type in what the factors are. Um, feel free to add more or take some away, um, but you have to have at least four factors, including multiplicities, for your ride. Um, and then you'll put a picture of it in right here. Let's real quick go to Desmos and I'll kind of show you what I mean. Um, so maybe you want for your polynomial to start by going through a factor of x equals zero. Um, so maybe we'll start with x and then we'll add in some more factors, maybe x minus eight. We'll go x minus 12 and then I'll make mine a, a short ride, um, maybe x minus 25. Now, as you can see, I'm only going to go from 0 to about 25 seconds, um, so it's going to be a fairly short ride. Um, but if you're looking at it, notice that it's going up very, very high and very, very low. In fact, you wouldn't even be able to zoom, zoom out to be able to see all of it. So here's what I would recommend doing, is going and in front of your variable, uh, making it a little bit smaller. Notice that if I make the leading coefficient a number um, very close to zero, like 0 0.01, I can actually start to see parts of my graph and, and where it's turning and all of that sort of stuff. Um, let me go ahead and maybe make it 0 0.001. Hey, I can at least see most of my graph there. Now, keep in mind that you can also use some, some transformations. Like um, for right now, it looks like our graph, because remember it's height um, versus time. So you, it looks like you're kind of dropping below ground, coming back up back below ground and back up, which is fine. You can you can have your graph go below ground, and in fact, in the project, um, later on it will talk about uh, how that's going to affect the cost of building it, but you can definitely build some tunnels for your, for your roller coaster to go underground. But maybe I don't want it to go underground, maybe I want it to stay above ground, so maybe if I do a reflection, I can get a graph that maybe looks something a little bit more like this. And now I'm looking pretty good. I've got kind of a smaller hill at first and going down from there, and then a little bit larger hill, and then kind of dropping from there. Um, but maybe I don't want it to go underground. So obviously if I want it to go underground, that's fine. I can leave it like this. In fact, it would probably make finding my zeros and solutions a little bit easier. Um, but let's maybe say I want it to stay above ground. Um, so let's shift it up, maybe up by just five. And now I've got a graph that looks something kind of like this. 
and I kind of like that. It's got a nice kind of setup. Um, we've got our, obviously, y-intercept at 0, 0,5, and again, that's where our graph will start, so we'll start by going up a little bit, down a hill, back up, and then one big hill to kind of finish things off over here, so my ride ends up being about 25, a little bit less than 26 seconds long. So you'll do something similar. Obviously, feel free to add more factors. Remember that you have to have at least four. Uh, my four were that x equals 0, x equals 8, 12, and 25. Obviously, those have changed because of my leading coefficient as well as my shift up by 5. Um, so kind of keep that in mind, kind of play around with it until you get a graph that looks like you want it to. All right, going back to the project, once you've figured out what your graph is gonna look like, uh, make sure to insert a picture of that with the labels, um, and then you can describe your graph. Uh, now when you describe it, kind of some interesting stuff you can do. Um, think about, are you gonna have any sort of loops or barrel rolls, twists and turns? Especially for loops, guys, let me kind of get you thinking about this as far as our graph goes. Uh, notice that on our graph that this right here looks like it's a hill. If you think about it though, all you're saying at that point on the graph is that your ride goes up and then comes back down. So I mean, if you wanted to, instead of thinking of it as a hill, think about it as a loop. If you were to think about height versus time, so here's what that looks like, again, as far as the height and time goes. But when you think about what that could represent, that could also represent a loop, because technically, you know, while the height's going up and then back down, once again, with the loop, your height is going up and then back down. So you could think of these kind of hills as actual hills, or you could be a little bit more creative, think about them as loops as well. Now, obviously, in between there, you can also think about um, as your graph is maybe going down or back up, mixing in some barrel rolls where the, where the ride's going to kind of spiral, uh, maybe some sharp turns and twists that are in there. So don't think of this as just a little kind of two-hilled roller coaster. It can be anything you want it to be. All right, now obviously we do have to do some math, and like we said, it is gonna be a major attraction for math lovers everywhere. Um, so you are going to need to fill in um, some of the key features for it. Um, for standard form, again, I've kind of mentioned how to do that and classifying, and then you'll go through and kind of identify all of those key features, um, everything from the relative maxes and mins down to the number of real and complex solutions. So you're gonna be kind of applying everything that we've done in this unit right there. Um, obviously, there's some more stuff going on here as well, um, where you'll talk about some features of the ride, like the time it takes for your um, ride to get back to the station, the number of tunnels um, that you are going to have to build, um, if it's ever going to go below ground, um, what the biggest drop is for your ride, and then obviously a little bit more math here with the solutions. Now at the very end, you'll go ahead and ca calculate a cost for your ride. Um, so you'll calculate that based on the features that you've added in. If there's anything that you don't see up there that you would like to add, just let me know and we can kind of come up with a cost for that um, as well. Now, once you're done with all of that, that's the project. It is worth 50 points out of the total 100. The other 50 come from your presentation as well as your discussion board posts. So as you start to think about your presentation, um, start to think about how you can sell your roller coaster and sell the idea of it. Um, in fact, in, in years past, what I've had students do um, is they've actually had to try to sell their ideas to a Shark Tank. So for those who have seen the show Shark Tank, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, but they actually had to sell their ideas to um, their classmates to try to see if anyone would actually buy their roller coaster um, to be able to put it in their park. Now, obviously, we're not going to be able to do that this year, um, but still kind of keep that in mind as you are working on your presentation. To give you a little bit more information about the presentation, let's go ahead and take a look at the rubric for that. Um, here is what you're going to be assessed on for your presentation. Um, the audio component and visual component are kind of givens. We need to be able to hear you and see your project. Um, also, don't forget the other stuff that needs to go into it as well. Um, and for more information, I've given you some brief descriptions um, below the rubric to let you know kind of what I'm looking for as far as the presentation goes. In addition, don't forget that you will be posting this to a discussion board. Um, you'll get four points once you post it, and then you'll get three more points for the two replies um, that you'll do for your classmates. Now, there are going to be some opportunities for extra credit. In fact, um, let's take a look at what we're going to have as options there. 
Um, so the opportunities you, you have for extra credit, and this is between all three of my classes, not just your one class, uh, but whoever has the largest drop is going to get some extra credit points. Now, obviously creating a large drop is not very hard on the graph, but it can make the rest of the project more difficult. In fact, if you think about it, stuff like the largest drop, the highest degree, most drops, multiplicities, largest y-intercept and x-intercept are all things that would probably be pretty easy. Like you could just go crazy adding a whole bunch of factors to get that extra credit, but it might make the rest of your project very difficult depending on how many factors you use. So um, keep that in mind as you are um, working on your project. If you're going to try for any of these extra credit opportunities, um, while they might seem very simple, um, some of them can actually probably be fairly difficult. That being said, guys, in the future, I will probably create a short demo presentation to share with you guys. This video was more so just to get you thinking about the project and to give you a brief overview of what you're going to be doing. So if you have any questions, feel free to email me or message me. Good luck making those roller coasters and just let me know if you need anything.